Hi, y'all. It's Bridget Cutshaw with Real Things Living. Today, my guest is Dr. Sabrina Ellis. She is the author of Wife Life, Securing Your Future. Can you say hi, Sabrina? Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I hope as I said, Sabrina, not Dr. Ellis. I'm sure that's okay, right? Yes. <laughs> I I think it's uh, you have a wonderful background. And guys, she's on this. So to Really, we're going to kind of focus on her. The book that she wrote, Wife Life, I think it was uh, published in 2020, but then she actually ended up living unexpectedly what she was writing about to help other women. Can you explain, I guess, what prompted you to write this book to begin with? Sure. Um, It really goes back uh, a long way, uh, maybe to my uh, early uh, teenage years. Um, Well, let me let me back up. The name of the book is Wife Life, Securing Your Future. And to, to sum it up, it's really encouraging women who are married, and and I believe it can also apply to men, but I had women in my mind when I wrote it, um, to prepare for what is um, the inevitable for all of us. And that is for the passing or the loss of your spouse um, and preparing to live your life beyond that. And it requires planning and um to just taking time to sit down and and think about what that looks like. I wrote the book because beginning with my mother and many times after that, I watched women um, whose lives changed significantly, of course, because they lost a partner, but everything that was attached to that, their lifestyles changed significantly. Um, and they weren't prepared for that. And so I wrote the book because it really became frustrating to watch this happen time after time after time. And I'm like, well, who's doing anything about this? If the spouse or the husband is not um, making preparations for when that time comes, um, maybe the women should, you know, take on the responsibility for themselves um, to prepare. And so that's kind of it in a nutshell. I watched my mom, her, the loss that she experienced was to divorce. It was divorce. And um, I believe that that can be just as tragic as the, as death, but um, she ended up struggling to finish raising her three children um, after being married Um to my father and he decided he didn't want to be married anymore. And so when he left, things changed significantly. And so it's always been something that has weighed on my heart, just watching as a teenager, not knowing that there was anything or thinking that there was anything that I could do about that. I just didn't like how it made me feel. And so, as you mentioned, um, I wrote the book in 2019. It was published at the top of 2020. It was to be launched. And by the end of 2020, I became that widow. Wow. And that was obviously unexpected. That's kind of how life is, right? Yes. And how long um, were you married to your husband? Or if we had you? made it to January of 2021, it would have been 39 years. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah. You just, I mean, that's amazingly long marriage, which is great. And yeah. I think you learned probably learned from your parents' divorce to keep, how to focus on your marriage differently. Very, right? Yeah. And, you know, very honestly, it was a big part of the motivation. Right. I, I'm with you. I had, had really, um, we had different um, lives growing up, but each of those lives, each of our lives in our past motivated it, motivated us to do something different. And it really gave us determination and drive. Right. It sounds so much like my marriage because I mean, I mean, right. You just, you're attracted to a certain person and I mean, you want to stay with the person that's right for you, but you found the right guy. And my husband and I are from, we were par- our parents are both divorced and we were both 15 around the time. Isn't that weird? I mean, I didn't know him until later, right. but we looked at life a little bit differently. 
You do. And when you think about marriage being more about commitment, I mean, we, we enjoy the feeling that love, you know, right. brings with it and all of that, but it's really about commitment and deciding to stay together, no matter what the issues are. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Sure. You and your husband had, and you didn't agree all the time. Just like, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> right, exactly. But you can't, it's not perfect. And I think that's what people expect out of it's not perfect. You just have, to, it's, it's about your commitment. Also, I think Absolutely. trust and yeah, it's just, uh, I just love the idea of your book, Wife Life, because I think kind of to go back to that, so many people don't, I think in a marriage, I think it helps too, if you're together and understanding what's going on with the finances too, and not just rely on that one partner, because what if, um, you know, I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say, it just they talk about balancing the marriage too, right? It's kind of the wife life. And, and when you un had, became an unexpected widow, at least you had a plan, I'm assuming, right? That's kind of well, what here's, here's it in my in my own personal um situation, um, I would say I wish I had started earlier. Gotcha. So, so a lot of this for me, um is learning as I was going along and as I've learned information, I'd use, I would act on it. So what I've said um, oftentimes in the past from my contact context and, and, and history and, you know, all of that, most of our families did not know a lot about how to handle money or financial literacy. So we pass that down from generation to generation and you can't do any better than you know to do. So as I started learning and actually looking back and seeing what some of the issues are and some of the problems have been, I started turning things around. And so I'm glad that I knew to do what I've done soon enough. You know what I'm saying? And I just... Right. It had been earlier. I shared with someone yesterday, actually, a gentleman that has taught me so much about uh, financial literacy, and, and he was asking me if I'm okay. And I said, I'm really okay. I said, I I, I started soon enough so that I am okay. Um, am I rich? Am I wealthy? No. Would I like to have more? Absolutely. <laughs> but I'm okay. And I think that's what's key because one of the things that drove me to write the book is, are the statistics that are out there concerning widows. And one of the statistics says that most women who become widows will be in poverty just five years after the loss of their spouse. Wow. Um, and, and, and my thing is, first of all, that's not okay. Right. <laughs> and it's, it's amazing statistic. What facts. do we do about this? And I think it has to be a conversation. I am not, a, um, um, you know, an expert in, in finance or anything like that. But once you have the basic information, I think it's required required of us to help another female, another woman, another, you know, think about these things. And what usually happens is we get excited about the wedding day and all of the bliss that goes with, you know, and we're excited about, you know, we're going to live our lives together, but we don't really take time to narrow down the specifics of what that life looks like and right. the end of life. We don't want to talk about that. I know I didn't. When my husband would would want to talk about when the day comes and I did, and I was like, I don't want to talk about that. And I wouldn't. I I'd, I'd say I would shut him down every time. And so now that he's gone, I think about the things that he wanted to say or might have wanted to talk about. But I do feel like that he was my husband was a great teacher. Um, I feel like a lot of the things that he taught me prepared me for this day. I never would have wanted to look toward this end or I didn't, I, I feel like if he could have taught me and I could have the lesson and he'd still be here, but I wouldn't need the information as much if he was still right. here. So it's not a way for me to um, 
rationalize his death because absolutely I'd rather have him here. But I do feel like um, things happen for a reason. And somehow I, I've said so many times, God has jokes. <laughs> this is unbelievable that I am now living what I was writing about and how, and actually become um, an example, if you will, of the difference in being prepared and not being prepared. Right. And I think, I mean, that's a really great point. I think also women usually live longer statistically, right, than men. Yes. And yes. that's part of what you're doing. We we need to know this. And my mother uh, outlived her last husband. He was, they were married almost, almost 35 years, right? But she was older than him and she still is, is here, right? You just, at least think, thankfully, I mean, they were prepared, I think. I think, but, um, but she, the, it's a shock yeah, and it you need to be realistic. Like you're, you're talking about all this happy stuff when you get married, but you still have to be realistic, you uh, and have a, a plan. And it's harder. I think when you have kids too, probably. Right. Yeah. And it's, I I'm think so it's, that's the key to having a plan. Yes. Um, we don't want to talk about it but it's inevitable. And here's the thing, as painful as loss is and the whole grief process, all of that, it happens every day of our lives. It's part of our life cycle. And I guess we avoid the discussion because it is so painful. Um, I, I have a friend who became a widow two years prior to me and we've just kind of been encouraging each other along the way. And I said to her, I would not wish this pain on my worst enemy. But at the same time, I feel like if I can help somebody, um, and this is sort of like information that I believe women should have prior to, this is like a before this, you get this. I, I think this should be included in marriage counseling, financial literacy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so that so that you're planning, this is stuff you can plan and put away. You know, like you need to have an insurance policy. Don't get married and there's no insurance policy. <laughs> right. You know, you're going to spend money on something. And, and usually it's going to be on the things that you want and not always what you need. You right. need life insurance. <laughs> Right. And that's right. That I totally agree with that. And I remember, I don't even think that they talk about money now in school. You know what I'm talking about? And how to find, they don't, not in high school. My kids, my sons are adults now, but they didn't have any of that kind of stuff. Right. Right. And that, I think that's what, <clears throat> what needs to change. I think that needs to change. Um, and, and it can only change when awareness of, is a brought is brought to the issue and when we talk about it more. And so that's been my goal. Um, and, and the book just kind of is kind of a guideline to give a sense of direction and point you to even the, the professionals that you need to have, you know, in your life to help you walk through all of that. You know, you need an attorney, you need somebody that deals with finances. You need, right. you know, you need all of these people, um, to help you so that when this day comes, you're not scrambling and you're not, you know, I was um, thankfully um, able to just, you know, have somebody, my brother who always works with families with uh, funeral homes and all that kind of thing. And when he was there by my side, I was like, I, I couldn't think straight. I couldn't think about, you know, when they had questions that, that needed to be answered. I was like, I'm, t I'm talking to him only and he'll take care of everything. And because I had the insurance policy, I didn't have to drag things out or I didn't have to wait or I had, didn't have to deal. You know, there's a policy, show the, the funeral home the policy. They know what it is. And so when I say I want this, 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 and this, they know it's going to be paid for. Right. These are the realities of someone passing. 
It has to be paid for. It right. It can't. It can't be done for free because they have to make a living too. The people that awesome. are helping you, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And the other thing, what I, I think too many people don't understand about insurance, it's not to be thought of as oh, this is a uh, uh, something for me to go out and splurge on because because my loved one left this for me. Insurance is intended to be income replacement, a safety net too. Right. Yeah. So whatever income my husband brought to the to our household is gone forever. It's gone. Right. And so most of the time we don't think about that. And very honestly, even though I knew this up here, it took a couple of years to realize, wait, whoa, I need to slow down with my spending because <laughs> I don't have what I used to have. And right. and that's why that right there is is the main reason why. So many women end up living in poverty after losing or either they're forced to marry again when it's only because it's for a safety net. Yeah, right. Exactly. That's it's kind of really, really common and it, it's scary and uh, what you're saying, but it's important to talk about because we all we talk about our health and staying healthy and proactive, but you've got to be proactive with your finances too and have, and have that i like the uh that you brought up the life insurance stuff thank god i have life insurance for me and my right yeah, just, we and did you it know, i don't know if you know people that do have done this but a lot of times when people are trying to rework their finances because things are a little tight or you know right. they can't handle everything um something like insurance would be the first to go they don't want to pay that premium right. That's not, you got to think long-term too, not just short-term, right? Yeah, yeah. It's funny because when my oldest daughter got married, not shortly after that, I just decided to get life insurance for her and her husband and the kids. That's and <laughs> I just, I, and I, at one point I was thinking, oh, I'm going to let them pay the policy. And then I rethought that. I said, you know what? No, because... When they hit that struggle place, you know, they're they're in their 30s. So when they get, they're going to have those bumps in the road and they're going to struggle. They're going to let this policy go. And then what? And it's going to be a mess if something happens to one of them and they have children. And then, you know, we're all, the family's going to be scrambling, trying to figure. So I pay the policy. Is it that because I can afford it necessarily? Not so much that as I recognize that it, it could be, it's the best thing to do for their family right now. Rather than give it to them and risk them losing it, I'll just pay it. Right. It, it, people like, I was really young when we got our life insurance. We, we got it, I think, when we had our first son, right? That's when we're like, okay. I don't know. I probably was my stepfather that told me this, but to, it was, thank goodness I had given that advice, was given that advice because I don't know if I would have, you know what I'm saying? It's, it was really a good idea. We had to change it recently because of our age, but that way that's just something you have to consider, but that's just how life is, right? Right. And, um, it, it It's just really great information. And, and what do you think, on the, the financial awareness, what is the best way? I think how you you talk and focus mostly on women. Do you talk coach them on that or I'm just curious? Well, I, I've I've considered the coaching piece. I have not actually done that. Um right. I have done several interviews like this one, uh like over 20, just having this conversation about the book. Uh -huh. Um but I have not actually done the coaching i thought about it okay i just because women need to be aware of this we yeah. don't we are a lot of them like you said are relying so much on the dual income now right and yeah. and if your spouse goes it's poof um yeah goes and, away. And really, in actuality um the thing that that really pushed me is that i is and i think i mentioned this earlier is at some point, when will the women take a stand to take care of themselves? Correct. That's true. And I, I'm, I, um, 
I'm very thankful for my upbringing, even though it was a little tough, but it made me a little bit more independent <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, of yeah. what I saw, what my mother was dealing with. Yeah. So, Just, can you imagine the women that rely solely on their spouses to take care of everything? That's not good. Everything. And they don't, they're not aware of anything as it relates to the finances. They don't know where anything is nothing so if that person loses their spouse right they're they're they don't know what to do right it, like a divorce or death unexpected exactly. death, right? and so right. it goes beyond the insurance policy you need to make sure your name is on the deed of your house yes uh, under point. that little space where it says right to survivorship you yes. need to make sure that your name is there um because, the, you know, there are women who who have to mourn twice. They grieve twice, you know, the grieve the loss and then get home and see all this paperwork. And you don't own the house that you've been living in for the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. So you have to vacate the premises, you know, things like that. It's happening every day. And and I think it, it, I know it's because women don't push to know the information. Um, they're afraid, maybe. I think they're afraid, probably. Sometimes they are. It is a hard conversation. And it, it, it may not be easy to have. You may not have that spouse that's willing to have the conversation. But if I, in my opinion, and it's not to raise confusion in anybody's home, but my opinion is that if you cannot have that conversation, if your spouse is not willing to share the information or work these issues out together, then you need to be building for yourself and your own future. Right. And just made me think that they should also have try to improve their credit somehow. All of that. Yes. Yeah. Anything That's financially related, you know, set you're setting yourself up for the just in case you that, that doesn't change how you live your life out. You know, you just enjoy your life with your mate, but something's going to happen You and you don't know what or when. So you this is just trying to be prepared. Yeah, it's true. I like that. And I just think a lot of women are just blow it off. Or should they blow it off? They're just, they want to just have fun, which is, I like having fun, but at the same time, you still have to do the hard work <laughs> to make right. sure you'll have a good future right. uh, and for your kids, if you have children. And it's just really, I really, you know, I'm, I'm a big health advocate, but I also, I understand the financial aspect, but I haven't really talked so much. I don't talk about it for some reason, <laughs> even though I understand it. Money is, a, is not the best subject in my house. Um, of course, early on, probably like most couples, money was the big issue. Uh, even still today, I think it's the number one reason for divorce um, in, in, among couples. But um, we finally settled that. It, it, for us, my husband was the biggest spender. And I was always nervous and afraid that we wouldn't have enough. You know, most wives just want to feel safe. Right. And that covers a range of things. But uh, making sure you have a roof over your head is 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 a large part of it. And so we finally came to the point where you I would just take care of the bills. That was his thing. You pay the bills. You take care of the money. I'll bring it home and just let me have my little mad money. And that worked for us. <laughs> so we had the joint account, which we called the house account. That took care of all of the bills and he had a separate account that was his and I had one that was mine. However, both of our names were on all accounts. Right. It's important just in case. Right. In case. And because think... if you can't have access to his account, if he should pass first, you can't touch that money. Isn't that scary? Yeah. People don't realize that. They don't think about it. And I think you learned a lot from your upbringing. Like, I think that, that's well, it wasn't my upbringing right. as much as what I've learned. Yeah, what you learned from it. Yes. Right. And from what I learned from my upbringing and the information that I gained in my adulthood and started connecting the dots. And it was like, whoa, my people need to know this. <laughs> 
And women, period, just women in general need to have this information. It's scary. I mean, it's good. I mean, it's good information, but we just they definitely need to be aware of it and they need to be motivated and and inspired to, to start thinking about it and try to create a plan just one little step at a time, right? Make it yes. not to yes. overcomplicate it because I think if it's too complicated, people just right. <laughs> it's not it doesn't it's not complicated. Right. Um, it 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 only becomes complicated when you have a whole bunch of money and a whole bunch of that. And right. those people usually, those are the individuals that don't even need insurance because right. they have wealth. Right, they have wealth. Wealthy yeah. don't need insurance because they're going to pass their wealth down, you know. But um, those of those of us who, who are not wealthy, um, I th- I'm not saying that the wealthy should not consider how their loved ones will be taken care of, but it may not be as complicated for them as it is for those who are not wealthy. Right. Who people who, are, who have relied on you. Um, right. And it's, I think it's a great topic. Uh, really, really great topic. Wife life, securing <laughs> your future. We just don't talk about it. We always talk about the fancy parties, right. And having a good time. Yeah. Where can um, people learn more about you, Sabrina? Well, can certainly go to my website, sabrinajellis.com. That's where you can also uh, get the book, um, Wife Life, Securing Your Future. And um, yeah, you can leave a message there if you'd like or <laughs> request more information. That's sabrinajellis.com. And for those that are listening, I'll have the link in the description section. I have one more quick question. Is your book on Amazon if people want to buy it on it Amazon? Is. It is on Amazon and it is also um, audio. It's uh, audible. Oh, yes. I think that's really popular, by the way. Love people like to listen to podcasts and audiobooks now, yes. which is a good thing. I really appreciate your time, Sabrina, and your knowledge and sharing what you learned. And it's a very, very important topic, especially for women. <laughs> and again, thank you again, everybody for listening. For me. I appreciate it. Okay.